What's happening, everybody? Jeff Lightsey Jr. here with the Black Boss Channel and Victory Formation. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe, and the notification bell because we upload every single day. Now, Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, and the Jackson State Tigers lost again. The third loss in a row. This one was to Alabama A&M this past weekend. And the biggest reason for this loss wasn't their offense. They played a great game on offense. They just ran into a buzzsaw and a future NFL quarterback in a quill glass. A quill glass, if you have not seen him play, and if you have not seen the offensive system ran over at Alabama A&M in Huntsville, Alabama, you need to check it out. They run an offense that, that reminds me of something like in the NFL. They run like a high-powered Big 12-style offense, like something you'd see Oklahoma run, but it looks even better, right? They hung 52 points up on Jackson State, and Aquil Glass just had a field day, 27 of 40, 444 yard, 440 yards, and six touchdowns, six touchdowns. <laughs> The man was incredible. Six touchdowns through the air. He added another one on the ground. The man had seven total touchdowns on his way to just lighting up the scoreboard down there in Jackson, Mississippi. Now, here's the thing about uh, Jackson State. Like I said, Jackson State didn't get blown out. The score was 52 to 43. Jackson State, uh, they, they replaced their quarterback. They were going with Jalen Jones. They replaced him with Quincy Casey. And Casey came in and had a game. A uh, Casey... He had a lot of his stats at the end, right? He was doing a lot of dinking and dunking, but he still finished 30 of 47, 323 yards and four touchdowns. They brought in a guy, Santee Marshall, who was a transfer from Miles College, who was who had been running scout team. Their starting running back was hurt or was out for the game, and Wayne Newman, who was the backup, was hurt. So they only played him limited snaps. And all Santee Marshall did was come in and have 19 carries for 126 yards, averaged six yards a carry, and scored a touchdown on a 53-yard run, the longest run of the season for Jackson State. But the problem, once again, was the defense. They could, I mean, I'm going to just be honest. It's going to be hard for anybody to stop a quill glass. A quill glass is special. A quill glass is a guy that I think can play at the pro level. I think he is an NFL quarterback or should at least be an NFL prospect. He'll be back in the fall too, by the way. So he is going to be lighting up scoreboards with this. I mean, the play design, the play calling, everything for Alabama State was perfect offensively. They protected their quarterback. They didn't run the ball particularly. I mean, they didn't run crazy, but your quarterback throws for 440 yards and, and six touchdowns. And then he had a he had a score on a scramble that was like a broken play, right? He like I think he might have turned the wrong way and he ran it in and scored anyway. But that is a special offense over there at Alabama and A and M. But what I take taken away is a few things to take away from this game. One, the resentment for Coach Prime Deion Sanders is real. The head coach of Alabama A and M went on to say like. Hey, you know what I'm saying? We like, you know, what Coach Prime is doing is cool, right? What he's doing is awesome. What, he, what he's doing is cool. But but we play football down here in Huntsville too. Like, like we're the ones that have been making plays. We're the ones that could potentially send a guy to the NFL at the quarterback position. We're the ones that run this offensive scheme that is beautiful, by the way. Any high schooler that's thinking about going to HBCU that wants to play on the offensive side of the ball, go over to Alabama AM, check them out because they run an amazing system. And that's what he's saying. He's like, man, we're the ones that have been making things happen over years. Now, Deion Sanders came in. He came in with all his cameras. He came in with all his glitz and glam. And you, and I've been talking about it for weeks, but you saw it again, once again, from Alabama A&M. There is resentment and pushback for that. There, There is a cost for that, right? You're Deion Sanders. You're coming from the NFL. You're coming from uh, NFL Network and being on TV and getting all these media uh, – sponsorships and Pepsi and Barstool Sports and you're on ESPN every week. Like that is very dope and very good for the culture as far as like bringing awareness to HBCU sports, HBCU football, Jackson State in particular. But you're going to find resentment. You saw when Alabama State, when they beat you, they put your face on the scoreboard. You saw when Southern beat you, the coach came out and said, we play football here at Southern. Right. And then after Alabama A&M beats you, it's like, hey, you know, we play football here at Alabama A&M. It's not all about the glitz and glam and the cameras and stuff that's happening at Jackson. And this is something that's going to follow Dion until he's able to start beating these guys consistently. But while he's trying to figure it out and which is I think it's what he, I mean, it's what he's doing. He's figuring it out. 
right? He's learning the landscape of the SWAC. He's learning who are the best teams. And one of the best teams didn't even play this year, this spring season, Alcorn. They didn't even play. So he's learning the landscape. He's getting to know the coaches. He's getting to know the players. He's getting to know how things are ran down in, in the SWAC conference, right? This ain't the ACC. This ain't Florida State. This ain't the Cowboys and the 49ers. This is Jackson State versus Alabama a &M. This is Jackson State versus uh, Alabama State. This is Jackson State versus Southern, right? He's figuring all of this stuff out. But when he figures it out, <laughs> when he figures it out, I just need everybody to keep the same energy, whether the good, bad, or indifferent. Keep the same energy when he figures this stuff out because he's going to figure it out. He's going. He, he has made it his mission to figure this stuff out. What he's going to have to figure out is that defense, he can't stop. Well, they he can't stop anything on defense right now. But that's going to change subtly when he gets some of those recruits in and gets some of those Division One transfers eligible. There's a couple that's eligible this spring, but everybody will be eligible by the fall. <coughs> Once that happens, and he's got to figure out the quarterback position. Quincy Casey played a good game. I'm not taking that away from him. He played a good game. Jalen Jones wasn't really the guy. He wasn't that great. But there was a lot of dinking and dunking, and they weren't over the top. They were not a vertical passing game. They could run the ball. But they were like five yards in a cloud of dust through the air, right? They couldn't get anything past really five, seven, eight yards as far as there was no vertical threat. And there are ball players on the outside for Jackson State. They got some players that can go deep as far as, you know, help them in the passing game. So it's not like a lack of weapons. Dalen Baldwin, uh, Warren Newman, these guys can really play on the outside. Corey Reed, who's a transfer out of Louisville, like they can really get vertical, but they don't have – the they don't have the signal caller to make that happen right now. Quincy Casey, I think, is good, but I think they're waiting on Shador Sanders, who will be eligible this fall. So I love the smack talk. I love the coaches coming at Coach Prime because it, it's going to keep him on his toes and it's going to keep make him force him to coach, right? It's going to force him. Recruiting is like 75 to 85 percent of college football. I'm, I'm not taking that away, anything away from the recruiting aspect. But you have to be able to not only just recruit the players, but develop the players and execute your game plan. And right now, Jackson State isn't executing their game plan, even though they have some really talented players. So that's and that's what the guys that like Alabama A&M and Southern are saying, like, yeah, we might not get the four. You know, but, but the Alabama A&M coach said, no, we recruit four and five stars guys, too. We just are able to develop them and execute our game plan at this moment a lot better than Jackson State. So I, I love it, man. I love the trash talk. I love the back and forth. Hey, and, and it comes with the territory when you're Deion Sanders. It's interesting also, Deion Sanders also brought up the Ray Lewis and Ed Reed potentially want to coach HBCU schools, right? We just saw Eddie George get a job at Tennessee State University. I think he's going to turn that program around really fast. With his connections over 20, you know, 20, 25 years in the Nashville area, there's really – it's prime recruiting ground right there in Nashville, Tennessee. I think he's going to get some really good ball players. He's got Jeff Fisher who's from the NFL. He's going to get some good assistant coaches to help him out and turn that program around fast. And they're in the Ohio Valley Conference. I think that helps as well. But if Ed Reed and or Ray Lewis are also able to snag jobs at HBCU programs, the HBCU community is going up. And I love it. I love it because these programs deserve it and they need it. And it will be great publicity, great for recruiting and great for uh, the historical value of each said program. So I can't wait to see it. Uh, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe. Once again, I'm Jeff Lightsey Jr. at the Black Boss Channel in Victory Formation. I'll see you guys next time.